A few weeks after the birth of Prince Eddie, Louise celebrated her sixteenth birthday, which meant it was just one year until she expected to come out. The following twelve months should have been spent organizing her wardrobe, completing her education, and preparing events to herald her arrival into adulthood and society. When she talked of her party for the following year, however, Queen Victoria announced that Louise would not have a coming out ball. Despite the fact that Albert would have been dead for over three years by the time of Louise's seventeenth birthday, the Queen made it clear that she thought her daughter selfish, forgetting she was in mourning for her father, and that she should not be thinking about parties. The ballroom at Buckingham Palace had been closed since Albert's death, and the Queen had no intention of opening it up for her wayward daughter to make an exhibition of herself in. Eventually, she agreed that Louise could have a formal religious confirmation, for which she wore a white dress decorated with swan's down, after which she would be considered out, and therefore able to attend formal parties and balls held by other people. Her confirmation was intended to be at the end of 1864, but ill health intervened. In the autumn of 1864, while staying at Balmoral, Louise became suddenly ill. She was treated by Dr. Edward Sieverking, who diagnosed meningitic complications or tubercular meningitis, an illness frequently fatal even today. In more recent years, this diagnosis has been challenged. In his book, Royal Maladies, Dr. Alan R. Rushton argues that if Louise had developed tubercular meningitis, she would not have survived, nor would her recovery have progressed as it did. But whatever Louise was suffering from, it was a violent illness, and one that left her considerably weakened. In October 1864, the Queen was moved to write in her journal, quite worried about poor Louise, who looked so ill. The princess's headaches were so blinding that she needed to be kept in a darkened room as the light hurt her eyes. She was kept in bed and nursed carefully for over two months. Despite her daughter's illness, however, the Queen insisted the household travel to Windsor. The train journey was agonizing for Louise, who was too ill to make the full journey. She was carried off the train in Carlisle to sleep in a proper bed and continue to Windsor at a later date. It was not until December that Louise was able to move her head without pain, and Sybil Gray wrote in her diary that even the sound of a rustling silk skirt was agony for the princess. For the rest of her life, Louise would suffer with intermittent health problems, often incapacitated by attacks of neuralgia, Many of these were attributed to her severe illness at the age of sixteen. In 